In this video, we're gonna talk about how to convert a molecule drawn as a Fischer projection into a line diagram. So it's gonna be the same molecule, but we're just going to have a different perspective on it. We'll show it in a different perspective. So what I've done is I've drawn out a pretty simple molecule here, but we've drawn it out as a Fischer projection, and we're gonna to want to convert it into a line diagram at some point. And, you know, Fischer diagrams are a little bit, Fischer projections are a little bit more esoteric than line diagrams, so this is understandable why you might wanna do this. So what we're gonna do, instead of doing a lot of bond rotations, which is one which is one way which is recommended to do this, I think it's easier to do, really what we're gonna be doing is the RS method. So learning the RNS uh, nomenclature and how to figure out RNS, I think is a really crucial, important skill in organic chemistry. You find it comes in very useful in stereochemistry in all kinds of different situations. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start by a step by step process here. You start by numbering the carbons. And I, for our purposes, this is, I'm not crucial on whether or not this is IUPAC approved, but it's really important to just number the carbons so we know we have a common point of reference, we know what we're talking about. Okay. And the second thing to do is going to be to figure out R and S for all stereocenters. So, you, well, you have to um, be able to identify stereocenters first, right? So, um, be able to look at this molecule and say, okay, which molecules are stereocenters, which ones aren't. Remember that stereocenter will never have more than one identical group. So, CH3 has three hydrogens, it can't be a stereocenter. CH2 has two hydrogens, they're identical, can't be a stereocenter. CH3 can't be a stereocenter. Our two stereocenters are carbon two and carbon three. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna identify whether these are R or S. And remember how the Fischer projection works, right? The arms come out to hug you and the vertical groups are actually pointing back into the page. So it might help to remind yourself that even though it's drawn flat, remember we're not really dealing with a flat module, it's, called, it's a projection. So we're drawing it flat, but it's not really flat. Um, you know, this is something that was developed in the early 1900. So what we're gonna do is now that we've looked at carbon two, we sort of made sure that we remember that H is out and OH is out too. Remember the the four groups that are around carbon two, which is our stereocenter, we want to determine their RS priority. So four atoms attached to the center of carbon are oxygen, hydrogen, carbon, and another carbon here. So between these four, uh, oxygen is certainly the highest priority. It's got the highest atomic number. Hydrogen will be the lowest priority. It has the lowest atomic number of one. And then we've got two carbons. and we have to break a tie between these two carbons. So this carbon number one has HHH. Carbon three is attached to O, C, and H. So this breaks the tie. This is higher priority than any of these hydrogens here. So this is gonna be priority number two. This will be priority number three. So let's figure out R and S here. So we go from one to two to three. This traces out a line which is going in a clockwise direction uh, you know, normally we would say that if it's clockwise, it's R, right? But remember that that's, that's assuming that number four ranked group is in the back. So since it's actually in the front, we're going to flip this. And remember, there was actually a video where we talk about this really simple trick, what to do if your number four ranked substituents pointing out in front. So we're gonna flip this and it's gonna make the opposite direction. So this carbon two is actually is S as we've drawn it out here, okay? So carbon two is S. Now let's do some surgery on the drawing of this molecule. And then we can think about carbon three, figure out what the RS value of carbon three is. So let's do that. So what do we have attached to carbon three here? We have oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, carbon. So oxygen's number one. Hydrogen's number four. Between these two carbons, we've got carbon, which is attached to, it's attached to carbon five, as well as hydrogen and hydrogen, 
is attached to the, it's the H's, two H's here. And this carbon is attached to oxygen, carbon, and hydrogen. So what wins? Well, we've got an oxygen here, right? That beats out carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen. So that is actually going to be higher priority. Um, let's make sure that's the right color here. Carbon 2 is higher priority. And then carbon 4 is third. So in this case, we'd be tracing this line going from 1 to 2 to 3 this way. So it goes counterclockwise, which normally would be S, right? But again, because H is pointing out of the page, H is number 4, we are actually going to flip this. So it becomes R. So we have 2S, 3R. Okay, so uh, now what do we do? Now that we figured out S and R, what do we do? Well, we're going to sketch out the line diagram. Okay, sketch out the line diagram. We're going to basically make the line diagram first. The stereo center might not be accurate. Say, that's why I say sketch. We're not going to worry too much about making sure the stereo chemistry is right. Just want to, in the first stab at it, we want to just draw our, our line diagram. So we've got one, two, three, four, five carbons. So we're going to need to have one, two, three, four, five carbons in our line diagram. And we can number everything just to keep track. So one, two, three, four, and five. Okay. Then, um, we make sure that our line diagram corresponds to our molecule. So carbon one is attached to CH3. Now that as it's drawn, this is okay, but it might help to remind yourself that this is CH3. Carbon two and carbon three are our stereo centers. We'll deal with them in a second. Carbon four, you don't have to draw these H's out, but I'm just gonna do it here. CH3 and CH2. Okay, and so we've got carbons and carbons here. So now with the stereo centers, we're going to just guess. Just guess the stereochemistry at first. And we're going to correct it later because we, we want to determine R and S later, make sure that we haven't guessed wrong. I think this is a lot simpler to do than, like I said, the, the bond rotation. But that's just my own personal experience. Um, I think it's harder, it's easier to make mistakes rotating bonds personally than, than it is in determining RNS once you get really good at it. But like I said, this is just my opinion. Uh, let's see. So let's just guess. Let's just say that let's make OH into a witch. And that would make this H into a dash. So it is a stereo center. So we're taking a guess. Could not, might, might not be correct. And then let's, I don't know, let's make this OH into, um, let's make the, this OH into a dash, just for fun. I mean, we don't really know. Um, we can just guess at first, and then, like I said, correct it later. So um, rather than agonize about whether we're doing it right, I think it's better to just put it down on paper and then see if you get it right, and then later on you can correct it. Okay. So now let's figure out what carbon two is. So we have carbon one, this is priority one. Carbon three is priority two. The methyl is priority three. So one, two, three, it's going clockwise, right? And is that correct? No. So number four is in the back, so that's correct. So clockwise, so it's, it's as drawn, it's R. So that's actually not correct. Um, what we need to do is we need to flip this stereochemistry here. So what we're going to have to do is correct the stereochemistry. Um, so actually, we should step four. Step four is determine R and S on your line diagram. and correct if necessary. And it is necessary here. So how do we correct this to make it going from an R to an S? Well, if you saw the video on the single swap rule, 
you know that all we have to do is take our wedge and turn it into a dash. We take our dash and turn it into a wedge. So if you flip or swap or invert any two groups on your stereo center, you're going to invert it from R to S or vice versa. So now, if we figure this out, one, two, and three, they still go um, clockwise, which would be R, but H is in the front now. So it's actually switch, we switch it, and uh, if I could spell switch correctly, switch. So it actually goes in the opposite direction, so it's actually S. So this is actually, now this is S, which is good, that's what we want. And then if we do the other one, um, let's see what this stereo center looks like. Okay, that's good, so carbon two is proper. Now it's, it's in good shape. So carbon three, let's look, got one, and we've got carbon two, which says priority number two. Our ethyl group is priority three, and hydrogen is priority four. So if we trace the line here, we're going clockwise, which looks like it's R. Um, however, H is in the front. So that's though so actually it has to be the opposite. So we're gonna uh, switch it. So now it's counterclockwise, which would make it S. And actually, so we need to correct this stereo center as well because we said that here, this stereo center, this is R, and we said that this one was S. Okay. So uh, we're gonna flip that same as we did before. So we're just going to take our dash and turn it into a wedge. And we're going to take our wedge and we're gonna turn it into a dash. And if we recalculate R and S, we see that one, two, three, it's going clockwise. And number four is in the back, so it is R. So we've successfully drawn out this line diagram. Now, this sounds like a lot of work and it seems like it's taken a long time, but actually once you get good at doing RNS, you'll find that it actually, you can do it pretty quickly. And so it actually doesn't take quite as long as it's taken for me to make this video. It, it, it's something that you can actually do pretty quickly once you get used to it. But it's a useful skill. It's why I recommend that understanding and how to apply RNS is one of those key crucial skills, overlooked skills in organic chemistry can really become a useful trick in your back pocket when you want to convert a molecule from a Fisher projection to a line diagram or from a line diagram to a Fisher or later on we talk about going from a Newman to a Fisher or a Fisher to a Newman these are all this is all useful um, grounds for knowing how to use R the RNS convention hope you found this useful